Hey, what's up, Seekers? I'm Niggy with Golden Dragon Fortunes, your K Rap psychic. So, all you blinks, all you blinks out there, come on in. We're going to be doing a reading for Jenny Kim. We just did a little countdown for her ships. We're going to do a reading for her future and maybe look a little bit at her past. Um, and we're going to do that right now. So, are you ready? Come on, Blinks. Here we go. Hey, what's up, Seekers? Looking in the future, Peekers. Your K pop Peekers coming around and see us every week. Yo, diehard K-pop fans, I want to know your stance. Just let us know your bias, then go ahead, try us. Namaste, salam alaikum, magandang arao, buenos dias, bom dia, konnichiwa. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Hey, Wanugi, Golden Dragon Fortunes, and we just did a reading, uh, not a reading, but we did a countdown of Jenny Kim's top ships, the best compatible ships. You might check out my channel. And we just did that, but you know, we, we forgot to do a reading for her. So we want to know about her future. Well, maybe we'll look at her past a little bit uh, first, and then we'll kind of bring it up to the, the, the present and into the future. And uh, we're going to use our Mahjong tiles to do that, to look at the future. But let's talk about a little bit about Jenny Kim a little bit. You know, for those, you know, for you Blinks, I mean, you probably know all this stuff. And for you J uh, Jenny Kim uh, stands, um, you know, those who have Jenny as a bias, I'm, I'm sure you know all this stuff. But maybe you're a brand new Blink, maybe you're just getting into Blackpink, maybe maybe because they haven't done anything in a while, maybe you don't know that much about them, you know, so uh, maybe you'll watch this after we, uh, after they come out with their next comeback, but um, anyway, I'm going to talk about it now. So just a little history about Jenny Kim, you know, she was born in, uh, on January uh, 16th in 1996 in Seoul, um, and she had a you know, well-to-do family that she was born into, she's the only child. Uh, so just her. Um, both her parents were busy, you know, kind of executives uh, and maybe uh, entertainment, maybe in the medical field. She spent the first, oh, I don't know, eight, nine years in South Korea. But uh, her parents decided to uh, maybe get her to move to another country. I'm not sure the reason, maybe to make her more independent. Uh, maybe they're just busy. Um, maybe to give her a little more, uh, you know, self-reliance. Um, but anyway, so she traveled and moved to New Zealand um, and when she was I don't know around 10 years old so she was very young um, and you know she was kind of in a homestay situation and uh, raised with you know nothing but English speakers around her at least Kiwi accented English speakers um, hey I love New Zealand I've been there myself uh, uh, several times been to Auckland um, so that's where she was too in the Auckland area and uh, she used to live there for for, I don't know, four or five years. And that's where she learned to, uh, you know, kind of learn the, a different culture, learn a different language, uh, learn different ways to interact with people. Really, I don't know if they, that made her independent as much as maybe uh, interdependent with uh, the friends that she had to, had to build there and create and, um, you know, kind of assimilate into that society. And she learned English. Think about it, if you're, if you're only 10 years old and you're shipped to another country and without your only family, uh, and learn to kind of be a, su su survive in a new new country, new language, new cultures, new customs. I mean, that's pretty tough, you know, from 10 to, you know, 13 or 14 or whatever she did, nine, you know, about four or five years. I mean, but that's a really tender age. Um, and so maybe it made her, you know, a little bit self-reliant and maybe that comes out in some of her, uh, you know, in her adult uh, actions. Uh, but also, I think it also made her a little bit, you know, uh, maybe afraid of being alone or, you know, maybe needing to have independence, interdependence with others, uh, just to kind of have that emotional kind of feedback and support. And I think that's part of who Jenny is. And then, you know, uh, when she turned about, I don't know, 13 or so, maybe 14, you know, about four or five years later, uh, I think the next move, I guess the family plan was to move her to Florida, to have her go to the U.S. and live in Florida. That's even farther away. Um, and um, and I guess you know she uh, you know she told her her mom that maybe she you know why don't I come back to Korea, and um, you know maybe try to be a K-pop idol and get into that uh, because you know there's some yeah there's some you know kind of tangential relationship to those kind of things uh, with her with her parents and her family so so she got into the idol industry and she started with YG YG Entertainment and and she was there for uh, she was a trainee for a long time I mean. She was supposed to, you know, debut maybe, or there were some inklings of her debuting, maybe in like two or three years down the road, like in 2012, because yeah, she was, um, 
you know, she was in New Zealand probably up to 20, you know, up to that 2010 or something like that. And, um, and then she was supposed to debut or they had some hints about her because when she was at YG, you know, she, as a trainee, she did some, some things. I mean, she obviously showed her talent because uh, she did some things with uh, Lehigh. I mean, she did some really good rap with Le one of Lehigh's songs. Um, and she also did, um, you know, some things with uh, Sungri a little later on. Uh, a little, uh, one, one song of Sungri's uh, she did uh, way back when. And then she also worked with G-Dragon. And uh, they, did a, they did a song together. She was, you know, um, she was singing with uh, G-Dragon. Because um, G-Dragon was kind of rapping. But uh, they, they did a song together called Black. And I love this song. You know, it's kind of, you know, old school. I mean, it's been a few years. But I love that song, Black. Uh, I love that song. And, uh, and Jenny is great, great on it. I mean, she wasn't really in the uh, release of it. I mean, but she was on the staging of it. She was, she was part of that, uh, part of that, uh, that, uh, uh, and, that, and also on stage, he performed on stage with G Dragon. I mean, G Dragon at the time was he was the king of, you know, he was probably the number one uh, K-pop idol in Korea, and so she was able to work with him. So she was kind of like, you know, then she was put back into the I don't know the dungeon, the YG dungeon, and so she was kind of kept as a kind of a well-known secret that here's this beautiful girl, she can sing and she can rap, and um, she got a lot of talent. And um, you know, it shows it shows up when, when, when they finally debuted in 2016 with uh, Blackpink. Uh, everybody, you know, kind of got into Blackpink. They liked the music, they liked the looks. They were all beautiful. And Jenny Kim, you know, uh, kind of stood out a little bit because I don't know, at least to me, because uh, she the way she rapped was, you know, really, uh, you know, really badass. And then then she could sing. And uh, I mean, they're all great. I mean, I, I love them all. But. Um, you know, Jenny Kim obviously had some talent. I think some people got a perception of her that rapper, badass rapper kind of thing, because she could really spit. She could really spit out the rap, you know, in kind of a machine gun fashion. You know, she helped to create these nice raps that were kind of more Western in their field. And you know, in the Japanese versions of the of the rap, she she raps it all in English. So in the Korean version, she raps in Korean, and then the Japanese version, she raps in uh, in English, and she sings in Japanese. And so she's very talented. She's multilingual. She has uh, she can her Japanese is pretty good. She's fluent in English. She obviously speaks Korean. Um, and then you know she raps and she sings and she's a great dancer and she's got this you know you know killer body. Uh, Jenny's got a lot of charm, but you know then she got kind of a bad rap. You know as kind of things went forward and after they debuted, she kind of I don't know some people just became aunties. I, I don't know if they're just jealous. I think there's just a lot of jealous people because she kind of had the whole package. You know she had the dancing, the singing, the rapping, the looks. I mean, what can you, you know? So some people just kind of became aunties, uh, I think, and uh, kind of, and, and out, out of all Blackpink, I mean, there's Blackpink aunties, you know, uh, but probably, you know, Jenny and, uh, you know, Jenny kind of got, got the, a lot of the brunt of it in the beginning. I mean, you know, everybody had their own, you know, aunties. I mean, Lisa does, Rose does, you know, Jisoo, but, you know, but somehow there was, uh, I think Jenny got a, a, a bad rap, really. I mean, even though she's good at rap, she got kind of a bad rap uh, from some people. The perception was that she's maybe, I don't know, had an attitude or was snooty or wasn't sweet. But she's a very sweet girl. She's a very sweet girl. And I think she's very misunderstood. But, you know, she's a little bit moody. I mean, you know, you figure, you know, if you went, if you left your home as an only child at 10 years old, went to another country and, and then had to grow up with another foreign family in a different lang learning different languages, different language and different culture. And then come back and spend six years in training where you had to compete every week. You had to, you know, make your weight goals, you had to learn how to sing, you had to learn how to rap, you had to learn how to talk, you had to learn how to pose, you had to learn how to do all these things every day. And then every week, you know, you'd have to be checked and tested to see how good you were. And then you see some of your favorite friends get eliminated or leave the company and you're wondering if you're next and you're doing you're living that for six years you know and you see some new people come in like you know lisa who's talented and you see rose who's talented and you know this is the environment you're living with for six years so the first 10 years of her life i mean a big 10 years of her life i mean she didn't debut she was 20. so half of her life was either in a different country or in a very regimented system where she was always threatened to lose who she was and trying to be remade into who she should be or could be. So that's a lot to deal with for anybody. 
Uh, and I think a lot of people don't understand that as far as, I'm not making excuses for Jenny because this is for all K-pop idols. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, it's not easy. Not easy. And so, uh, so she anyway, and then, then there's a whole thing uh, in 2018, the second half of 2018, where she, you know, then there was all these aunties saying, oh, Jenny's lazy and she's, you know, not doing the whole thing and she's not doing the whole routine and she's not, you know, showing like she's singing when even though, you know, the, the BGM is, uh, you know, there and, and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, like, and there was a lot of, in the late 2018, there was a lot of aunties or people that were saying lazy, uh, Jenny's lazy. But really what was going on, you know, is that she was in love. I mean, I mean, she was dating. She was dating Kai. You know, we didn't know it at the time, but you know, I mean, I predicted it in, in, in summer of 2018 and it came out in 2019. But, you know, she was, you know, one thing about Jenny, you know, is that she, is, she learned to be very self-sufficient through all that training in the different country and YG Entertainment. And so she can be very fierce and she can put that out there and she can show that image. I mean, when she was young, I mean, when she was training, she was doing rapping. You know, there's that, she was doing this rapping and mainly because she spoke English and then all the raps were in English, you know, so she could do the rap, you know, and a lot of the other Koreans couldn't. They just couldn't have the, you know, their tongue around the rap. So she got into rap, but I mean, obviously she sings too. But, you know, uh, so they, you know, so that the image early on for her was that she's tough and she's this rapper and she's, you know, whatever, um, westernized and, but she's also also a very sweet, tender girl, and she's a lot of really misunderstood because deep down inside, you know, even though she's got self-resilient and she puts her best foot forward and she wants to be perfect, when she can be, you know, the pressure gets too much. The pressure, and sometimes she just wants to be herself. Sometimes she just wants to be. She just wants to feel her emotions, and you can see it when in that lazy period, you know, that she was like, hey, I, you know, I it doesn't. This is not really important. I mean, I, we've done this same song a hundred times, and so you know. And I'm thinking about maybe somebody about my own my own life and my own relationship, my own love. So she was, you know, uh, I think she was unfairly, you know, criticized. That people don't really understand, you know, the life of an idol. And and then, you know, um, you can see it again also when, in 2019. I mean, that ended, and you know, she probably got pressured to, to kind of stop that, you know, the Kai relationship because it was uh, r r risking her future. So, um, you know, that was carefully developed, managed uh, by her agency, by maybe, you know, her family. Um, so, you know, she kind of, you know, when she got, did you can see it when she was in um, uh, Coachella. You know, so Coachella was like, hey, that was a big thing. That was a big dream. And, and you can kind of see that she just let go. After the Coachella and they did that worldwide tour, you could see that there was moments where she just didn't give a crap. You know, she just wanted to go there and go out there on the stage and enjoy it and, and get the love of the fans because she couldn't have all the love she maybe needed or wanted uh, in her and through her periods of life and experiences, uh, you know, in a difficult situation. Uh, so she always had to do what other people wanted of her, whether it was her family, whether it was her agency. And so when she goes out now and she, you see her on stage sometimes, she's just in the flow of it. She's just loving the flow of the, of the, the fans, the love of the fans. Um, and even though she, you know, sometimes she, she things don't work out perfectly and she kind of gives up or sometimes she gets, you know, frightened by things and she, you can see that she's, you know, pretty underneath all that stuff that a lot of people think they know about her. She's very, very soft and a little bit afraid uh, of not being good enough. Um, anyway, I don't want to make any more excuses for Jenny, but um, that's what I get. That's what I pick up uh, from her. And so let's do a reading about her uh, for the future. Let's see what's going on maybe next six months or a year uh, and see what's going on. So we're going to use our Mahjong towel. So let's do that next. You ready? Thanks. Come on in. Jenny stands. Let's go. Hey, what's up, Seekers? Welcome back. Hey, Blinks, Jenny Kim fans, all the other fans, K-pop fans. So we're going to do a quick reading for Jenny Kim. We can see what kind of energy is flowing out there in her future over the next mm, six, eight, 12 months. Uh, roughly the next year, and um, we're going to use our mahjong tiles. We're going to use my mahjong tiles. This is the same tiles and the same setup I used 18 months ago when I gave my first reading for Jenny Kim, and then I turned into a wrap, and, uh, and most of it came true. You know, we found out six to eight months later that when we did a review in January of last year, that most of it came true. So we're going to see what happens this time um, for Jenny Kim moving forward. 
And um, this top half of here is just going to be the next six to eight months, more or less, uh, maybe a year. And I'm going to start from the center, move toward you, and then move around like this. And then these uh, down here are two questions, uh, specific questions or general questions. Um, this first one's going to be about career, her career, you know, with Blackpink and her career overall. And then the next one says that there may be, uh, this maybe is about her love life, um, perhaps. So we'll see what the towels say. So let's start with the center here. The uh, first towel in the center, uh, which represents a little bit of theme, this is the mushroom, the eight of bamboo. It says that there's going to be some, you know, unexpected things that are going to be coming up you know, over the next six months to a year. Um, uh, you know, not good or bad, just kind of unusual in the way it uh, may come about and how it happens. Uh, but so it represents some surprises, you know, some um, unusual things that may happen um, as a theme because it's in the center and kind of represents a theme. Now these two tiles right in front here, um, these represent roughly the next month or two, next six weeks, roughly eight, six to eight weeks. Um, this one here is the fa, um, like gong he fa choi, shuk mong namoi, gong se ha fa sai. It says that something new is starting. Something new is percolating here. Uh, this represents to start something new, to commence. Um, and this one here represents, you know, some of her inner thoughts, uh, some of her subconscious thoughts perhaps. And she's thinking, she's very hopeful. She's very hopeful that this new thing is going to start to get going. Um, and she's very hopeful about how it might develop and what it might become. Uh, and if we go over here, this is roughly about mm, two or three months from now. Um, says there's going to be a lot of emphasis on creative activities, and creative energy, the young energy, young female energy. This is the Six of Circles, represents, it's called the Peach, represents young female energy. Well, certainly that's her and her group. Uh, but also represents creativity and a nice aesthetic. Uh, so maybe there's some emphasis on those kinds of things, beauty, femininity, um, and creativity. So beauty, femininity, creativity, and nice aesthetic is going to be emphasized here over uh, you know, probably um, two months out, um, two, three months. And uh, it says that things start to come together very successfully. This is the center towel, the jung, and it says things come together to the center and fit in the right time, right place, and uh, seem to be uh, successful in, in the way that's, that femininity, that beauty, and that creativity is happening. And as you go up above that, um, seem to say roughly in about mm, 90 days, perhaps, or so, maybe a little bit more, um, the lotus shows up, the five of bamboo. The lotus represents birth and enlightenment and awakening. Something new is about to start or is opening up and expansive and growing. So it's a very positive tile, uh, represents all these things uh, very positively. And it says that's going to give an opportunity for her, maybe the group, uh, to put some sorrow behind them, you know, to put some disappointments and put some uh, things behind them and do some healing, you know, kind of emotional healing to move past that and move forward because there's this new growth and new enlightenment, new awakening. Um, roughly about three months from now, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then up here, this is about four months from now, uh, maybe five months from now, maybe six months from now, somewhere between that time frame. Uh, these outer two represent maybe some things that were disappointing or not quite as good as she, the, she thought, or maybe um, not in the way she thought. Uh, so maybe her expectations were a little bit idealistic or unrealistic, but uh, suggest that, um, you know, she thought there'd be some better luck, some good luck somehow. I'm not sure why, but this is the dragon. It represents good luck and good fortune, but it's kind of blocked. So it's not quite happening as she expected or wanted or desired. Um, this is the West Tile. Seems to say that she had a specific goal or objective that she was trying to uh, accomplish or achieve or you know maybe for the group. Uh, but that's kind of blocked too. So somehow the luck's not so good and the goals aren't quite reached maybe as she wanted to or hoped uh, to do. But it just says that uh, this tile here in between, this is the North Tile, just says that she just has to kind of work through that, you know, work through that disappointment or work through that uh, not as good, not as good luck as she'd hoped, uh, and you know, just that's how help her get past it. Is just you know, kind of keep grinding, uh, keep moving forward, get, work through that cold wind that's blowing in her face. And it says as she goes over to here to the um, to the right here, uh, to your left. Um, this is probably about five, six, seven, eight months from now, somewhere in that time frame. There's going to be an emphasis on a relationship, a partnership. The two of bamboo represents the ducks. Ducks are all seen together. So it says there's a relationship or partnership that may be emphasized around this time, um, more or less. Um, and it says that um, that might uh, lead to something that opens up new possibilities and new things that might grow. And they may start here and this time, roughly, you know, five to eight months from now. Um, but it seems like it's going to be maybe something that has a long-term impact because it may be actually more successful in the very first quarter of 2021 
uh, almost a year from now. Uh, so the first two, three months of 2021, there's going to be new things opening up and growing and developing. And this uh, dragon, the five of circles, represents good luck or good fortune. It was kind of blocked here, but it says now it's happening. There seems to be a partnership or relationship or some, some person or entity that helps. Um, and it seems like that turns into good luck now. And, and maybe grow, things start to grow and develop more and maybe will be even bigger uh, by uh, early next 2021. And then the Lotus shows up again and, uh, um, and says that, yeah, you know, you had a little bump in the road here, and, but you had the Lotus here and now it's showing up again, which represents expansion and growth and enlightenment and awakening and all these things. It's a very positive tile. So that shows up roughly, you know, six months, seven, eight months from now, um, maybe a little bit more. And then it says there's going to be an emphasis on maybe something that has to do with uh, um, authority. So this is the tiger, represents uh, authority. So something or someone that may have some power and authority to influence your life. Uh, maybe this is their employer, you know, YG Entertainment perhaps, um, or um, some other kind of uh, authoritative energy. Um, but it seems like say, it seems to say that it could be an, uh, could be an older male um, or somebody that has that kind of maturity and authority. Um, it says that that's going to kind of emphasize this relationship again. The two of bamboo shows up, the ducks, and it seems to say there's going to be uh, some type of uh, emphasis on another person um, and a relationship in some way. Uh, this is just overall in general, doesn't say which part of her life, uh, but she's going to be very hopeful about that uh, as she kind of goes through uh, maybe this last half of the year. She's going to be very hopeful about how things are developing. Um, you know, so I don't know if that's a, you know, kind of a new deal that she's doing with uh, maybe an endorsement or changing uh, a relationship maybe that has to do with her label and her uh, music uh, or something more, more personal. But um, that's what it says overall over the next six months to a year. So then we asked, uh, okay, just what, give, what about uh, the, you know, the, her career? And uh, on these, I'm going to start from the center, kind of work outwards and kind of show the passage of time roughly, you know, roughly, I don't know, three, four months at a time or so, says that there's going to be a lot of emphasis on communications, talking, meeting, communicating, maybe it's singing, but this represents communications, the six of bamboo, over the next uh, several months. Um, and it seemed to say that there may be some talk or some type of decision that may come later, but it's being worked on now. And this one is called the um, uh, chrysanthemum. And the chrysanthemum is a beautiful flower, it's elegant and refined, uh, so it represents nice energy. But it's kind of a, you know, chrysanthemum kind of blooms in the fall. So it's kind of saying that maybe nice energy is starting to happen, but the real uh, impact of it may not be till maybe farther down the road, maybe late summer, early fall. Uh, and somehow that's going to help her change the way she sees herself uh, in her career, because this is called the, um, called the peacock, and it represents her and how she sees herself and that her self image and her sense of herself is evolving and maybe maturing and getting ready to go to the next phase of her career. So maybe there's a, uh, something that may be impactful then. Uh, I don't know if that's something that uh, may be different than what she's been doing. Um, I mean, she's done the BP thing, she's done the solo. Maybe there's something else involved that may come up uh, maybe for the fall. Uh, maybe there's some kind of, maybe some acting or something. Something is changing the way she sees herself. Um, and as you go out a little bit farther, it says that uh, a door of opportunity opens up. Uh, something may be opened up, but it, uh, it's going to take some discipline and patience. Um, this one um, is called the fisherman. And the fisherman, you know, has to get up early and go out to sea. And then he's got to wait for the fish. So it says that there's something that requires some discipline and patience. Uh, maybe that's just, you know, waiting to, for the fall to come. But that's what's hinted here. But somehow that discipline and patience um, is going to lead to some type of commitment. Uh, the knot shows up, represents commitment. Uh, this style here and that's going to offer an opportunity for her to let go of some past disappointments again and do some emotional healing and kind of move forward um, in, in her career so uh, with a, this new commitment so that's exciting and then it says there's going to be um, something that uh, she finds very exciting something um, uh, like fire this is called the fire tile so it represents something that's dynamic and inspiring and attractive to her in her career and something that may have some downside risk um, but she feels like the benefits outweigh the risks and she's going to go for it or she's going to want to go for it. And it says that's going to lead to a decision or choice, a key decision or choice that she might be making um, roughly, you know, in the second half of the year, maybe toward the end of the year, um, that she's going to you know, take the risk, take the risk and stretch herself or try something uh, that maybe moves her forward in a career in, in a new way or a different way, kind of like it hinted in the beginning. Um, and then these 
this row here represents maybe just some tiles that may have to do with their love life um, and see what's going on there. And um, the first two say that, you know, she's right now she's trying to focus on herself and what's best for her and kind of re re remind herself that she's got a lot to offer the world and a lot of talent and a lot of things that she's still growing on. So she's still trying to sort some of that out for herself and trying to grow into who she really is, you know, and kind of maturing to the next phase, but you know, taking care of herself. Um, but it says that she's gonna feel that she's a little bit more flexible and adaptable, uh, willingness to maybe bend with the wind, not break. Um, I mean, I think she's had a, a period here for the last year where she's, um, you know, kind of gotten along with the program and kind of, you know, uh, had to do what she had to do for her career and, you know, had to kind of, um, you know, stop this relationship. And so she hasn't been able to really do a lot for herself and, and maybe there's gonna be an emphasis on that. Um, and, and maybe she's gonna feel a little more flexible and adaptable because she hasn't felt that way, that there's, there's enough flexibility and adaptability in her life. I mean, it's highly structured and highly regimented as far as what she has to do and the obligations for her job and her career and for Blackpink and for YG and all the things. I mean, they're kind of, Blackpink has been kind of the monetary engine that's helped YG kind of pull out of all their problems from last, um, last year. It was a disaster last year. And so that's why they're kind of not spending a lot of money producing new MVs and whatever. They're just, um, you know, doing a lot of touring, a lot of touring in Japan. So they're just kind of, you know, it's low cost. They can just go over to Japan, introduce, uh, you know, develop that market, uh, perform, uh, sell out stadiums or venues. And so, that's, you know, they're kind of, for YG's sake, they're kind of having to do this and delay everything. And that's why it's taken so long or, you know, while we're all waiting for the comeback. And um, it's because, you know, YG had to get their house in order, their financial house in order with all the things with YG and Sundry and all these things that happened last year. So they have to get, you know, get their financial shape back together. And, you know, the, the, new, the new president has a financial background, controller's background. So, you know, the numbers have to add up first. But it says that there's gonna be something that makes her feel um, more creative and more feminine and more beautiful and more uh, maybe more womanly, girly. Uh, this is the peach, represents all those things, femininity, beauty, creativity, uh, a nice aesthetic quality to it. And seem to say that the more honest she is with herself, this is the unicorn that represents honesty and clarity. The more honest and clear she is, uh, the more she's going to know what to do, what decisions to make about her love life. Uh, and it seems to say there may be something that comes up. Um, I don't know exactly what this is trying to say, but the white towel represents something that's written communications or documents or paperwork, or maybe it's just texting on a phone. It kind of looks like a smartphone. But it seems like there's gonna be an emphasis on communications here, probably in the second half of the year. Um, and it's gonna be something nice and special. The pearl shows up, um, this one of circles, and the pearl represents something beautiful, refined, and precious like a pearl. So it's something that's gonna be you know, probably dear to her heart and maybe involve a lot of communication because she's still got a busy schedule and it's hard, kind of hard to sneak away. But some, like, something is maybe coming, um, maybe in the second half of the year where she's gonna feel more like she wants to uh, be open to those possibilities that may be happening um, at that time. So anyway, that's her reading uh, overall. And, um, you know, like and subscribe, make some comments down below about what you think. Uh, check out my old videos about Jenny Kim, and you can see what happened uh, the last time we did this. And, um, hey, I love Jenny Kim. I love Blackpink. You know, I'm waiting for the, the comeback just like you are. Uh, I think it's going to be in a couple of three months. We'll see, but I think it's going to be around that time. Uh, they still got to kind of, you know, make money and pay the bills. Uh, but uh, it's coming, so just uh, hang in there, Blinks. And um, so until next time, you know, like, subscribe, ring the bell, put it on social media, share it. Um, and if you have, a, if you have a, your favorite idol that you want to see, if you're compatible with them, um, then um, just, you know, write in the comments that, you know, give us your hour of birth, the, uh, the day, the month, the year, the city, the country, and we can kind of look at one of these systems and see, you know, how you're compatible with your favorite idol. And we'll put that in your comments uh, and, and do that for you. So, but you have to like and subscribe first because I can't do this for everybody. So, like and subscribe. You know, tell us who you want to uh, see your compatibility with, who's your idol, and give us all that birth information. And we'll answer you back uh, as best we can, as soon as we can. All right. All you blinks, you know, thanks for show showing up. Um, that's all. I uh, hope the best for Blackpink. I think they're going to have a, a good year. It's just going to be a little bit later than everybody wanted. Um, but until next time. Wishing you all good fortunes. For
going to see the energy. It's much for Jenny. If you're excited or you're nervous, grab that bottle full of any. If you're a blink, then you know Chichu calls her gin dookie. Some army amplix try to ship her with John Cookie. I'm your K rap psychic. Try me twice, you'll like it, like it. My name is Wanuki. OGs call me Wanuji. I'm a wise fortune teller and a really mellow fella. Ask me about your favorite idol. See their future, see what's vital.